I need a tan. Welcome back, I'm Grimdork. Thank you very much for joining me. Tonight I'm talking about terrain because um, it seems to be that um, all you newbies out there are um, kind of a little bit worried about starting on terrain, don't know where to start or whatever. Um, it's really daunting. Um, I know when I kind of got into painting models sort of prop properly, um, I'd, my terrain just stayed unpainted um, because I was like, how the hell do I even start this? Like the scale of it's much bigger and, and whatever. Um, it is the easiest thing to do, right? And there really is no excuse to have any unpainted plastic on the tabletop really, but especially terrain, like, especially if you're putting the effort into painting your miniatures and getting them looking good. And then, you know, you hang out with your mate and play a game of 40K or Kill Team or whatever it's gonna be. And your terrain just looks like garbage because it's still grey plastic and it's just, no, no, you can't do it. Um, so that's what we're doing tonight. Thanks very much to Latham on Instagram um, for very kindly sending your Octarius terrain to me to have a bash at. Um, so I can kind of show you all how I do mine. Um, so we've got some nice Orky Octarius terrain, right? This has just been primed Chaos Black. Took me all of five minutes. Did it literally like 10 minutes ago. It's already dry. Um, even that on the table is like better than having grey plastic. So come on, just uh, no excuse. Uh, get your fingers out and let's uh, let's get it on the table. Um, so basically I'm gonna take you through how you can get it on the table and look in like quite good for literally like five minutes worth of effort. You will get, like taking the Octarius box as an example, if you had that built and primed, you'll be able to paint the whole terrain to like a decent tabletop standard in 20 minutes probably, like no time at all. So um, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna show you tonight. Um, so we're basically going to just like speed paint with some dry brushing to get this looking like it's sort of rusty old antiqued metal. Um, and then what we'll probably do is just pick out a couple of little details just to add like a little bit of, of um, extra detail to it. Um, you don't need to go overboard, but again, like take it as far as you want to, but at least if it's sort of painted to a fairly good standard, um, it's going to make you, it's going to elevate your games, right? Um, and then, you know, if you've got like a spare evening and you just want to take it a bit further, you know, then spend a, a few hours just sort of picking out some details and, and kind of uh, taking it beyond that basic level. But you should know why I'm here by now. Um, minimum effort, right? Minimum time. Um, just getting things looking good. Um, but just like making the most of the basics, right? And dry brushing is like the most basic of the basic. You all should know how to do it. Um, it's not like rocket science, but it, it can still be used to great effect for certain things. Um, and terrain is definitely one of those things. So I'm not gonna natter on, cause uh, you know, people have been telling me off for talking too much. So uh, I'm just gonna get to it. Disclaimer, I have had a couple of drinks because uh, I've just been out with my mates um, but I've been putting this off for a couple of weeks, so I thought, no, I'm not gonna use that excuse. I'm gonna come in and just get it done. So if I can do this with a few beers in me in like 10 minutes, then come on, guys. Right, so here's what you're gonna need. Um, a couple of like cheap, nasty brushes. I think these I, I just bought off Amazon as a set, right? But these are great for doing terrain especially, because um, they're gonna get a bit knackered. That's fine, um, but you want brushes that are kind of a, a reasonably good size um, for obvious reasons. Um, now we're going to do this with two paints that you have that you get in the start sex. I know most of you will probably have the uh, the Citadel, like, you know, starter box, whatever it's called. Bugman's Glow, underrated paint this, not many people use it, but it's really, really good. Um, use it for all sorts of stuff. And Rune Fang Steel. So normally when I'm doing this, I use Necron Compound, which is a dry paint, but this works just as well. You just want something silverish, right? That's it. Um, and some like kitchen towel or something just to sort of dry your brush off. Um, here's what we're gonna do, right? 
So you've, you've primed your business in Chaos Black. Um, we're going to have a dunk into the Bugman's Glow and just rub it off on a bit of kitchen towel. Now these, this is going to be a relatively heavy dry brush, right? It's not going to be a really delicate dry brush. You want it to actually, like, you know, show, right? Um, Start with the inside just so you can kind of test it because the, the chances are you're probably going to have too much paint on the brush initially, right? You're just going to go over the whole thing, right? Again, it's not rocket science. I don't know really why I'm, I'm even doing a tutorial for it, to be perfectly honest. It's the easiest thing in the world. Um, but it is interesting to see just how quick we can get it. And honestly, like the finished result does look pretty badass, actually. Um, I still haven't like finished, finished my Octarius terrain. Because um, I've still got like details and stuff to do that I want to do, but it's good enough to just sort of have it on the table, um, looking better than the bare plastic, right? Make a mental note of any detail that you want to pick out um, individually, All right? Um, So, for example, you know, the lights, maybe we'll try a little bit of kind of very basic OSL on them. Um, you know, things things like the, um, the little orky boys there, just sort of painting them in. Um, these tanks, like a, a lot of people kind of paint the tanks in, it's going to look fine without, right? But if you wanted to sort of pick out that little bit of detail, you can do. Um, some of the scatter terrain in Octarius has things like tires and stuff. So, you know, those sort of things you're gonna to wanna to go back over and block in in, in black, um, so they don't look like they're made of metal, because uh, it doesn't make much sense. Most people aren't gonna notice, it doesn't really matter. You know, again, just take it as far as you wanna take it. Um, you know, you don't need to feel any pressure. Like, that's the whole point, like the whole point really in this in this channel even, is just, you, you don't have to, you don't have to be the best at this, right? I'm just out to like have fun, and um, I get quite impatient. So, um, you know, I, I want to be, as soon as I start painting a mini, I just want it to be finished. Um, it's not a good trait to have, but I know there's people out there like me, and, um, but my finished models, I think, look all right. So, um, yeah, hopefully if any of this advice can sort of help you guys out, then it was worth me doing it, isn't it? Five pieces of big terrain in Octarius, and um, and then some scatter terrain. All right, so just do everything in one go. Prime everything, then do the Bugman, then do the Rune Fang, and then like just go through each piece individually whenever you've got time, just to slap some extra detail on there if you want to. Like I said, you don't need to. But the, the biggest misconception is, you know, beginners just daunted to start painting the terrain because they assume that it's going to take them forever to do you know if if one tiny mini like if one orc is taking them like a whole evening or you know sometimes longer to paint to a standard that they're happy with how long is the terrain going to take them right that's the sort of thinking um it's not the case, it's a different animal, right? It can be a bit scrappy. Yeah, some people spend so long on painting the train and obviously it looks amazing and they're all done with it. There are some amazing artists out there. I am not one of them. I'd like to be, it would be cool, but you know, I've accepted long ago that I'm just too lazy to be that good. You know, if I put the time into a model, um, you know, I can paint it pretty well, but it's rare that I ever paint, you know, take take ages and ages and you know, do it really carefully. Um, I like to get stuff done quick. But it's it's about, I, I posted recently about, you know, one of the key things with speed painting, it's, it's not actually about the speed, it's about the efficiency, right? It's how good can you get it to look in the time frame. It's not just, can you get it done as quick as possible? Um, this happens to be very, very quick, 
but it's also really really effective so it's just maximizing the efficiency you know rather than just maximizing the time it takes just make sure you haven't missed any bits because they'll look funny Right, let's just go back to that bit. That's dried off a bit now, so just redo that side where it got a bit wet. That's better. Cool. Make any mental notes of things like we've got a little light on the side there, um, which is going to look really cool if we just sort of concentrate on that. Like, just small details count. Like. You don't need to go overboard like painting all the little the little bits and pieces, but just picking out one or two details on each thing. Right, so we've got the, the little orc shield thing there, another one there, the light, uh, this fan on the top, you know, you could do some kind of detailed bits and pieces there, the checkerboard stuff, like you could go over just with pure silver. That kind of stuff. Just things that are not gonna take too long. Right, that are easy to do. Bear in mind, this is supposed to be like a scrappy piece of terrain, right? In the grim dark future and all the rest of it, right? Everything's knackered. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't need to be perfect. The whole point is that it looks kind of scrappy and nasty. So, um, you know, you got to bear that in mind. Right, so we're done with our bugman. Um, Runefang, I hope this works. I usually use Necron compounds, so I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be just as good. It's basically the same stuff. Um, so any kind of light silver, you could use lead belch and stuff like that, but, but actually using a, a really bright silver is, is good because it's going to contrast nicely against the, um, the black and the sort of rusty colour. So this needs to go on a bit thinner, right? So again, like start on a relatively inconspicuous area. I'm using a smaller brush. You could actually probably still use the big brush, but the idea with this is that you're you're doing it much much thinner, so it just catches the edges. Um, this is actually <laughs> this brush has still got some bugman glow on it from the last time I used it. I think. Um, just not too much. This one's going to just be catching the edges. Looks great, right? So, I'm just going to carry on over the whole thing before we then just do a little bit of detail here and there. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you know, try and get into all the nooks and crannies just to make it look consistent. Oh, too thick. But it doesn't matter! It doesn't matter! Who cares? You can mess about with washing it and stuff. I, I don't really see the point. Um, again, like, this should all be fairly secondary, right? It's your models that need to look good. And if, if your terrain can look kind of semi good but still subtle and simple, then um, your game is going to look really great because you, your models obviously, you know, you've put a bit more effort into them, they'll, they'll really pop. Um, Definitely don't want the terrain to like stand out. <laughs> you know, you don't want that to be the sort of like shining example of your painting. You know, the models are what's important. And all the pew 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 pew. I realise, however, that it was a blatant lie that you could get the whole box done in 20 minutes. Um, but, you know. I've been at these two pieces for, you know, not even 20 minutes yet, and they're basically done. All right, so you can see how the whole box is not going to take you long at all, um, you know. 
an hour, maybe, I guess. You certainly can do, do the whole thing like just one evening, if you've got a spare evening. You know, you want to paint maybe, but you don't want to paint, you know, you don't, don't have the energy to paint your models, but you've got a spare evening to do some hobby in. Then, um, yeah, think about doing your train instead. Get it all done. So again, sort of keeping an eye out for details. Got a couple of lights on this one. You know, again, the, the tanks, you could actually paint a different colour. Um, but honestly, it kind of, it does make sense that they're just sort of battered bits of old metal and it all looks the same. Um, some of these little gauges on here could look pretty good, like touched in. Again, you don't want them to look pristine, but you know, put a little dab of white in the middle, you know, red for the little dial. Um, yeah, that could look pretty good. And give it a little wash, make it look dirty. So, even there, right, just. You can leave it there if you want, right? That is better than just having grey plastic and it's taken no time at all. Um, so just, you know, leave it there if you want. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so... Um, we're just going to pick out a little bit of detail. I'm not going to go too overboard. I just want to show you sort of how effective it is just doing couple of little bits um, so I think what we're gonna do I'm gonna show you some really super super basic OSL on this um, OSL for those of you who don't know it stands for object source lighting um, and it's like creating a glow basically like um, if there's a real light there where would that light shine so you're not just painting the light the color that you want it to be you're also painting the glow effect over it as well people can take that to serious levels um, and it does really really elevate your miniatures a lot but it's a more advanced technique it's very difficult to get right and, and do properly um, but there is a very basic way that you can do it which is perfect to, for terrain especially um, so let's kind of explore that a bit um, I'm gonna use a bit of white scar All right, um, any other bulbs? Don't think there are any other bulbs, but there are on here, so I'm gonna block those in two. Then orky colors are generally very bright, so I've gone with some flash kits yellow. Great yellow this, super bright. And some Mephiston red. <clears throat> now these bits really don't need to be very precise at all um, because they're orcs that painted these. Orcs are not known for their brush skills. <clears throat> Not mine, but um, yeah, you, you want to try and get use the side of the brush for this as much as you can, and again, sort of nice and thin, don't overcook it um, because you, you, you don't really want your brush to go into the recesses, so you're just going to sort of graze it over the top again. Don't make it perfect, there's no point in it being perfect, it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to look worn out, so let some of that silver. Um, dry brush and sort of rusty colour show through. That's it. You know, that's all you need to do. Um, that easy. So I'm probably going to do this light red. So I'll do that skull yellow and that one red, just so you've got you know a bit of contrast going on um, on each panel. So try and stay to the, like the insides, and um, it doesn't matter if the outer edges of the sort of shape you're painting um, isn't really 
anticipated because those are the areas that would naturally get worn off quickest. Flaskets yellow is a really good yellow but again if you want it to be smooth you've got to put a couple of layers on. Um, probably won't matter with this because um, you, you, you don't, again you don't want it to be pristine anyway. But if you do want it to look a bit sort of cleaner then um, just go over with a second coat. I actually think it looks cool without, it kind of looks like some orcs sort of just gone at it with like a, a fat paintbrush like slapping a bit of paint on it. Yeah, that looks cool, that. Alright. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Now, normally I would use a dry paint for this, but I forgot. Uh, so I'm going to use Mephiston Red. Usually, you know, it doesn't really matter what you're using for it. It's just an observation that I've never done this with a, you know, base paint before. I need to use a smaller brush. I'm going to use this one that my mate ruined. Thanks, dude. Now, the thing with OSL, like from a technical standpoint, I'm not a very technical painter, but um, you've obviously got to think about where the light would catch. Um, so it's not just going to be directly around it, it's going to also sort of be bright on, on these bigger edges and sort of in, in these sort of areas here, um, next to the light. So just a little bit stronger on those raised, ed raised edges nearby the light source. And just help to kind of add the impression the light is on. All of these edges on the outside and it would catch the light a little bit stronger. Right. And um, I'm not going to bother but you know you, you could highlight the reds in the light to make them appear like they're a little bit brighter. Um, I can't really be bothered, so uh, I'm not going to. So it just kind of looks like it's sort of paved in light. Uh, um, simple, kind of easy way of doing it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I don't have the paint here to, to do it, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll brighten up the red kind of closest to the light source. Um, just to sort of help that to pop a little bit more because this is actually a darker red than I realised. This one's going to be a little bit more straightforward because there's not really raised areas around it. Um, so you can just, you know, nice and even just sort of stipple all the way around the light. Just a you know gradually fading circle. And that'll work a treat, I think. Similar to dry brushing, you want the the, the brush to be relatively dry before you start stippling. Um, but as long as you're consistent in where you're doing it, um, because you're just working around the outside of it in a circle, and then as the paint dries further, go f further away from the light source and um, you should get a really kind of quite authentic glowing effect. Kind of like that. Yeah, I'd have liked it to be a bit brighter in the middle. I don't have the paint for it today. You know, when you see the guys do like really, really good OSL, then you'll kind of see what I mean. The 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 glowing effects are darker, right? The the, the actual shade of, of colour that you use will be darker the further away from the light source. Um, 
you know, this is not terribly advanced, but in an ideal world, you'd, you'd use a brighter red in the center and then darker reds as you kind of, uh, as it sort of radiates away from the, the, from the light source. But, you know, this is supposed to be quick and dirty terrain, so um, I'm not worried too much about it. So there we go. Quick, dirty, octarius terrain, battered metal. Uh, damp site better than grey plastic. And you can go over these with a bit of Agrax Earthshade or whatever just to sort of make them look a bit grimy or whatever. Um, there you go. Paint all your terrain in an evening. Um, easy to do, very very effective and like I say you don't need to sort of pick out any of the detail if you don't want to. You can just use this to sort of get the terrain on the table looking good. Um, and then if you get any time later on, you know, if you, you want to take it further, then that's down to you, right? There you go. So easy, right? Just a quick one tonight. Um, um, you know, it doesn't need to be crazy, but but that's like better than you know ninety percent of the terrain I tend to see on on tables, where um, it's either just not painted at all, or um, it's you know just primed, and you know they've sort of just slapped some base paints on there and in sort of a half-hearted attempt at just putting some colour on it. Um, you know, that, that it's, it's, it's just not a very effective or efficient way of doing it. It's, it's taken, you know, quite some time to just take it to that standard. And this is just way faster and it looks way better. Um, so give it a whirl. Give it a whirl and see, see what you think. And, um, you know, take some pictures. Um, Send them over to me. I want to see, you know, what you guys come up with. Um, just remember that, like, you don't need to go overboard on the detail. Just pick out a few, like, key little pieces of detail to focus on, you know, just a little bit, and, um, and that's that's a really, really effective way of, of, you know, doing it. And and probably the best thing you can do to make your games look and and feel that much more kind of exciting. Um, so that's that's it. That's me, it's a fairly quick one tonight. Um, I hope it's been of interest. I hope it's been helpful. Thanks again to Latham for getting the terrain to me. I'll get it back to you as quick as I can. If this has been helpful, then uh, please like, comment, and uh, and think about subscribing too. It really, really helps. Um, I've got, I've just done a giveaway um, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I've got another one, a big one coming um, with some Kill Team stuff. Uh, so stick around, um, details for that is going to be up in the next few days. I'm out, I'm gone, I'm going to bed. So uh, yeah, catch you soon, thanks for coming, see you later. Oh,